I just realized that I haven't done a tips and tricks video in a very long time. So let me show you some awesome tips and tricks and we're mostly going to focus on the S24 and the 23 series. But as you all know, most of the features are identical across every Samsung smartphone. All right, so let's start the video. So did you know that you can change the tone of your messages or whatever you are writing using the Samsung keyboard? So when you open the keyboard, you'll see the AI icon right over here and tapping on this will give you the option to change the writing style. You've got professional which changes the tone of whatever you're writing to formal. Then you've got casual which will change the tone to informal. Then social which is perfect for posting on social media since it's even got hashtags and emojis. So yeah, you get the idea. And lastly, you've also got the spelling and grammar check, which will check the grammar and the spelling of whatever you've typed. Awesome features, right? Now, if you haven't noticed, the keyboard on my phone looks very different. It is the same Samsung keyboard, but it's got all of these cool typing effects and different colorful themes. So if you want the Samsung keyboard on your phone to look like this and have all of these effects, what you want to do is open the Galaxy Store and search and download an app called GoodLock. So this is the one. Now inside GoodLock, look for a module which says Keys Cafe. Now download this. Once you do, open Keys Cafe. Here, open style your own keyboard and make sure that it is switched on. So here you've got some pre-installed themes and I was using one of these. But if you are not satisfied with all of these, then you can create your very own theme by tapping on the plus button. And it's actually really easy to customize. Tap on these circles and change the color of the particular element on the keyboard. And if you spend some time, you can come up with really nice looking keyboard that suits your personality. So take a look at this. And keep in mind you'll have to design for both dark and the light mode. And once you are done, don't forget to save and give it a name. And then select the keyboard that you have just created. And if you want to add some colorful effects, tap on effects and choose whichever one you like from over here. And yeah, this is how you customize the Samsung keyboard and make it look awesome. I'm also using something called swipe to type, which greatly enhances the typing speed. So to enable this, tap on the settings icon in the keyboard toolbar and once you are in the settings, scroll down to swipe, touch and feedback. Inside, tap on keyboard swipe controls and set this to swipe to type. And that is it. Now to type, all you have to do is swipe over the letters for whatever word you want to input. So to input the word Charlie, we can start swiping from the letter C, H, A, R, L, I, E. And there you go. And once you get a hang of this, you are absolutely going to love it and not going to go back to typing the old way. So sometimes every one of us would have taken photos of documents. But on your Samsung phone, instead of just taking a photo of a document like this, what you want to do is tap on the T button and you will get an option to scan the document. And this lets you crop the photo and save it as a properly scanned document, which is going to be much easier to read. However, this method can be time consuming because you have to crop the photo every time. So what you can do is quickly take photos of documents. And later when you open these photos in the gallery, You'll see the T icon once again, which you can tap and you will get the exact same options. And using this, you can scan the document after the photo has been taken. And the end result is a properly scanned document. So this is an awesome feature, right? Now do keep in mind that this feature was introduced quite recently. So if your phone is not running One UI 6.1, well, then you're not going to see the scan icon in the gallery. So keep that in mind. So I've got a habit of wearing a hat. And the thing is, whenever I take selfies, the photos have a nasty shadow right here on my face. And I guess you guys will be familiar with this problem if you wear a hat. Fortunately for us, we can remove this shadow with the built-in photo editor. So once you open the photo in the built-in photo editor, tap on this icon and from this list, select the object eraser tool. 
and here tap on erase shadows and as you can see the phone will get rid of the shadow that was on my face so yeah there you go the photo looks much better now here's a tip for you guys if your photo has come out a bit dark what you can do is head on into the image editor and from here you want to adjust the light balance and this will increase the overall light in the photo and bring out all the details this is a little different compared to brightness if you just increase the brightness the image will lose details in the bright areas as you can see which does not happen if you adjust the light balance setting so this is such a powerful image editing tool i absolutely love this one of the big highlights of the s24 and now the 23 series is the generative edit tool in the image editor and this tool is awesome because it will let you erase or rearrange items in your photo so what we can do is pick and place this moon anywhere we want and then we can tap on generate and there you go it's just like magic however when you save this photo you'll notice that the phone adds a small watermark which helps identify that this is an ai edited image which i personally think is a good idea however there's a little trick that will help you get rid of this watermark so all you have to do is open the image with the watermark in the photo editor then tap on these four dots and from this list select the object eraser tool now tap or draw around the logo and then select erase it might take you a couple of tries depending on the image but yeah there you go that's how you get rid of the watermark so i'm gonna ring up the s24 ultra and watch what happens take a look the camera led is flashing letting us know that there is an incoming phone call and this is gonna be very useful when you want the phone to be totally silent. That includes switching off the vibrations. And the camera LED will also light up whenever the phone gets a new text message. So this feature is called flash notifications and you can find it by going into the settings and then scrolling down to accessibility. Inside accessibility, tap on advanced settings. And here you'll see something called flash notifications. So from here you can switch on the camera flash notifications and also configure for which application the camera flash will light up because you don't want the camera LED to be flashing every time an app sends you a new notification. Usually I only keep it on for phone calls and text messages. You can also set the phone to remind you of a pending notification. So right now I've got the feature turned on and you'll notice that after a couple of minutes the phone will play a sound reminding us that there is a pending notification. And there you go. So this can be very useful if you don't want to miss an important message or a phone call. To enable this feature you want to head on into the settings then notifications and then advanced settings and here you'll see something called repeat notification alerts so switch this on and select the apps for which you want to repeat the notification and select an interval and to stop the phone from repeating the notifications make sure that you dismiss them now did you know that you can share the clipboard across all of your Samsung devices? And this allows you to copy and paste text between them. So maybe you found something interesting on this phone and you want to send it over to the other one. Like I want to send the text that's in this photo onto the other phone. So what we are going to do is take a screenshot and then press on the T button. And you'll see that the phone highlights the text and now we can select and copy the text. And now we'll be able to paste the same text on this phone. And there you go. So this feature is called continue apps on other devices. You can enable this feature by going into the settings, tap on connected devices, and then continue apps on other devices. And for this feature to work, both the devices must be signed in into the same Samsung account and also must have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi turned on. Alright, so to enable this next feature, here's what I want you guys to do. Drop down the quick panel, tap on the pencil button and edit the full quick panel layout. And from the available buttons, add the camera and the microphone access to the quick panel. Then tap on done. And these two features will give you the ability to completely block 
the microphone and the camera on your phone. So once you switch either one of these off, none of the apps on your phone will be able to access your camera or the microphone. So even if we launch the camera, you can see that it shows a blank screen. And same thing happens in Snapchat, it just shows a blank screen. And as for the microphone, let's go to WhatsApp and start recording a voice note. So after recording a voice note, if we send this over, you'll see that there is actually no voice in it because the access to the microphone is blocked. So on the recipient phone, we cannot hear anything, even though I've got the volume turned up. So this is a fantastic privacy tool. In case you feel that an app is spying on you, you can always disable the camera or the microphone access. Samsung smartphones have a built-in dictionary and a word translator that you can use to find out meanings of words. You can use this feature while browsing the web. Just keep your finger on the word and then select the dictionary option. And it will show you the meaning and the translation of the selected word. You can also use this in other applications such as Samsung Notes. Once again, just long press on the word and then tap on dictionary. You can even tap to see a more detailed description. Now, if you want to use this feature, you'll have to set the dictionary up. Let me walk you through how it's done. So start by selecting any text on your phone. I'm just going to select something in Samsung Notes. Now from this menu, select dictionary. Now it's going to ask you the permission to appear on top. So enable this for dictionary. Now when you go back, the phone is going to prompt you to install the dictionary database. So tap here and then download the English dictionary from this list. It will take you to the Galaxy store. So just follow the instructions and download the appropriate database from here. Now if you want, you can also download translations. For example, let's download the English to German translation. And that is it. Our dictionary is now ready for use. So now, whenever you highlight a word and then tap on dictionary, the phone will show you what the word means and its translation to the language that you have selected. You know what? I think this is one of the most underrated feature of Samsung smartphones. Sometimes you might accidentally end up moving the icons or the widgets on the home screen, especially if you've got clumsy hands like mine. This actually happens a lot to me and it is annoying. So if you want to prevent this from happening, pinch in on the home screen and go to the home screen settings and turn this feature on which says lock home screen layout and this will lock the widgets and the icons in their place. Very useful if you have spent a lot of time creating the perfect home screen. When you've got a Bluetooth headset connected to the phone, the audio is going to play back through the headset rather than the phone's internal speaker. Now, what do you do to switch the audio back to the phone's internal speaker? Well, many people are gonna disconnect the Bluetooth headset to switch the audio back. Well, don't do that. Leave the headset connected to your phone and instead drop down the notification panel and tap on media output. And from here, select this phone and the audio will start playing back through the phone's internal speaker, leaving the Bluetooth headset still connected to the phone. So this way you don't have to go through the hassle of disconnecting and reconnecting the Bluetooth headset to your phone. Now the same settings also allows you to play music over two Bluetooth headsets. All you have to do is start by connecting two Bluetooth headsets or earbuds to your phone. So right now I've got the Sony and the Samsung Buds 2 connected to the phone. And from the media output settings, select both of the Bluetooth devices. And now the music is going to play back on both of these and you've even got individual volume controls. So this feature is going to be very useful if you and your friend want to listen to the same song together over Bluetooth headsets. Alright, so that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed, make sure that you hit the like button, share the video with your family and friends and subscribe to the channel. And this is Tech Guy Charlie signing off.